Hello to everybody who watched this video. Um, I have a message that I should have shared almost 15 years ago. And I didn't realize it until um, today when I watched my baby brother's um, video. Um, his channel is Saving Lives LLC. I didn't realize that it took me 15 years to say this dream that I had because I allowed the spirit of fear to convince me not to tell the story. I was afraid that people wouldn't listen to me. I was afraid that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to save people. I was afraid that people weren't going to listen. And, you know, God had to tell me, like, it's not my responsibility to save people. It's my responsibility to tell everybody what he told me. And I can actually honestly tell you, I was not asleep when I had this, when I had this uh, out of body experience. And it actually was a vision. I grew up in the church all my life, um, read the Bible religiously, faithfully. Um, it was something that I believe in, that I believed in. And, you know, sometimes like when you hear pastors teaching the word, you know, they take their own perception of what they think it meant and they teach it to you. And then you later start questioning whether or not mm, God didn't really say that. Mm, maybe that's why or hmm, why did God say? And growing up, I think I was always um, curious because to me, if you told me do not do something, I didn't understand why. Like I didn't have an understanding unless I actually went through it because majority of the time, every time we were told not to do something, we were never told why. It was just don't do it because I said so. And I think over time it raised a rebellion in me. And one of the um, you know verses that we had always heard in church was that if you partook in um, homosexuality, you couldn't you couldn't inherit the kingdom of earth going through failed relationships um especially with people playing with your heart it kind of makes you divert from you know the opposite sex it makes you curious like hmm you know why does it seem like on tv you know there's successful relationships amongst you know same-sex relationships and so even though it was embedded in me that that was an un um an unjust practice and that, you know, it was forbidden. It was forbidden amongst God's, you know, his rules. It was forbidden. I still had that curiosity. You know what I'm saying? Back then I did not indulge in relationships because a lot of times I was afraid that if I ever gave my virginity to somebody that they were going to run it around and tell everybody in the neighborhood because, you know, when we were on the West side, all of the neighbors that we had, they always bragged about who they smashed, you know, and just kind of just was very inappropriate with the experiences that they had. And I didn't want to be another number on their list that they smashed and passed. I really believed in getting married and staying married, just like my grandmother and grandfather did. Like they died together. You know what I'm saying? Like they were still married and even unto you know, my father being resurrected into heaven, my grandmother stayed faithful and, you know, all the way up until she was ready to leave him, right? So back then, um, because of the fact that I was single, you know, we were always taught whenever you have sexual frustrations, you go take a cold shower. Well, in the winter time, who's gonna wanna take a cold shower? Like who's gonna wanna take a cold shower with growing hormones every single solitary day? So I ended up getting um, you know, into pornography, which I actually started, my addiction to pornography started at the age of six years old. So I always knew how to take care of my sexual frustrations, which was through pornography, which in fact is another tool that's going to send you straight to hell. At first I didn't believe it. I didn't, I never saw the evidence of it. So I just kind of thought, you know, oh, the church is trying to scare you into not sinning so that you can go to heaven. So one in particular day, um, I watched porn, but I did not practice the act of masturbation whatsoever, but I did watch it and I did watch same sex 
you know, porn because back then I felt like watching the opposite sex, like it, it seemed like they were faking their pleasure. So whenever I saw girl on girl, like I always felt like I was receiving the joy and the release that they had. So I always watch girl on girl. And one in particular night, I think I had watched it around like five or 6 p.m. And I was laying in bed and I, I was awake. I was laying in bed around like eight or nine o'clock p.m. And I was just staring at the ceiling. I was just staring at the ceiling for whatever reason. I don't even remember what I was thinking about. But all of a sudden, I saw my hands get stretched out and I couldn't move. And I'm, I'm feeling my heart. It's, it's starting to palpitate. And I, I, I literally could not move. And I'm sorry, I don't want to cry. Um, I should have told this story a long time ago. Okay. Um, my hands were stretched out and my legs were stretched out. And I saw this, um, this brown dinosaur looking creature. And he had this tail that, and he was brown and the tail was just flapping up and down and it had spikes on it. And I could tell from how I was laying that he came over to my right side and he jumped on the bed and he touched my legs. And then I could feel um, that there were other creatures on the side of me, but I couldn't turn my head. And so instantly I was flipped on my stomach but I wasn't allowed to see the beasts that were beside me. But they literally flipped me on my stomach and they still had me stretched out. And one of the demons literally got on top of my back or the, or the, or the creature, the, the, the dinosaur creature got on top of my back and he took my head and he pushed it through the pillows. And at first I thought, I was gonna suffocate, but I, I wasn't gonna suffer. I didn't suffocate, I, I was able to breathe through it. And the pillows became translucent to where now I'm going through the mattress. And mind you, I had a futon pull out, you know, pull out mattress. So it was like the futon was on springs. So at this point now I'm able, like I'm literally translucent and I'm going through this pillow and I'm going through, you know, the bed and all of a sudden the the ground the ground literally opened up and, and, and it formed a circle it literally opened up around me it was a big black circle and my bed was hanging on the edge of it and as he was pushing my head in i could see into the abyss like i, I could literally see into the abyss and it was this black tunnel and I knew, I knew it was hell. Like, I just knew. Like I said, I grew up in church. Um, I, I was forced to read um, to hell and back and to heaven and back. So I heard of all the experiences. I heard and was able to see plenty of times that hell was real. And in the back of my mind, I thought to myself, I would never go there. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Christian. Like, I would never go there because, you know, all I got to do, you know what I'm saying, is pray, whatever. I'm at the edge of this bed and the more that he's pushing me down, I could feel that eventually if he, cause right at the time I was, I was on my chin and he's steadily like still like pushing me down. And I could tell that had he pushed far enough and had he let me go, I was done for, I was going to hell one because I knew better and two, because I was getting ready to die in my sin. And I knew like if he let go, I was gone. So in the back of my mind, like I could, I could feel, I could feel these hands that were at the bottom and, and like, you can feel what goes down. Like you can feel everything. Even if you don't see it, your spirit can sense exactly what's going on. 
and I could feel so many hands, even though you couldn't see them, like you could feel that they were egging and reaching because they were waiting to like pull me into the ground. Like they were waiting, I mean, pull me into hell. Like they were waiting to pull me in. And like, I literally just kept saying like, Lord, forgive me. Like, Lord, I repent, Lord, I repent, Lord, I repent. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And at the time, like I thought he was done. Like I thought he gave up on me. I thought, you know what I'm saying? Because several times, every time I got done, I would pray and be like, Lord, forgive me. I won't do it again. And then the next day I would do it again, like without a conscience, without thinking about it, I would do it again. And then I'd feel bad. I'd watch porn. I'd get off and then I'd feel bad. And then I'd pray and then I'd go to sleep and then I'd wake up. Like it was a, it was a never ending cycle, but he basically showed me what happens when we take advantage of his grace because life is, is our time is very, very limited. And you hear a lot of people say several times, oh, your time is limited. Oh, um, the time is at hand. Oh, the time is at hand. Um, oh, you never know, um, you know, what day you're going to die or you never know. You know, time isn't promised. Life isn't promised. And it has you falsely believing that you have time. It has you falsely believing that you can stay in your sin. You can do what you want. And then eventually when the time comes, you can just repent and then you can just go to heaven, right? And so you it's more like trying to have your cake and eat it too. But at the end of the day, you never know like when he's tired of being taken advantage of. You never know, you know, just the fact that the devil is a raging, you know, he's like a raging lion waiting whom he can devour. Like he's trying to take as many people as he possibly can because he hates God so much that he knew that the greatest thing that God loved was his children. So if he can kill as many people as he can, then he can keep ripping God apart, right? He can keep ripping as many people. It said many are called, but few are chosen. There are so many children that, that are on this earth, but they chose the way of sin. They chose to, to feed their flesh. They chose to stay in a Sodom and Gomorrah type of country to be able to do what they want to do have sex with as many people as they wanted to have sex with they wanted to engage in drinking and smoking and listening to music that they knew was nothing but backwards curses from the devil because he said that he cannot you know physically curse a christian but he knows that if he can put a secular song in he actually has it. He has a lot of people praying over their songs to where they're putting spells on the song backwards, but in the physical realm, it plays forward. So we're sitting and we're, we're reciting these songs to get all oh, that's a dope beat. Oh, that's a dope song, but we don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm. Everything that he does, he does it backwards. Every cross that's up, he turns it upside down. Everything that God said is not, you know, clean. He says, well, how do you know? Or you know what I'm saying? He has a funny way of manipulating that. So he manipulates a lot of the songs. So because I took advantage of grace at that time, God showed me what it looked like to not have any more grace left. And for so long, I had a lot of um, a lot of friends and family, you know what I'm saying, who are gauging and, you know, the same sex, you know, situation. And I was always curious, like, well, how does it seem like they're happy? But at the end of the day, for me not to tell them or for me not to say, you know, what I've seen or what I know to be true, it's like I'm allowing for them to fall subject to the fact that they could lose their life at any time because we are not supposed to engage in those type of acts. So for me, you know, after I kind of like saw a bunch of my brother's videos, like it definitely, definitely sat on my heart and I couldn't, I couldn't keep it in anymore because... I was responsible to say this a long time ago, but I was so afraid that I wouldn't be able to help anybody, that nobody was going to believe me, that I wasn't going to be able to save anybody, that I was not going to be liked, that I, that I was, that a lot of people were going to turn for me. And at that time I was struggling with, um, rejection. I didn't like rejection. I, I really wanted to just feel loved and be loved. And I thought that when you hear the term make love, that it was going to make love to me, or I was going to receive love from the love that people were making but I didn't realize that they were engaging in the act of sin and sin leads unto death. So I chose not to put makeup on. I chose not to, you know, make this about me, but to make this about Jesus Christ. And I heard somebody say today, I hope that I get into heaven. Well, Romans 10 and nine says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved, repent, turn away from your sins, 
pray and God will heal your land. Turn completely away from the movies, from the TV shows, from the games that cause us to be distracted so that we are not aware of the attacks. We're not supposed to give the devil a foothold or else he's going to completely take our life. And at this point, there is no playing around because you never know if that last day that you sin or that last day that you play around, if you go outside, if you're going to get shot or if you are driving in a car, if you get into a car accident or if you go into a building and then there's a mass shooting, like you never know, like when your time is going to get cut off. So I urge you, I urge you, I beseech you, I pray, I pray that you literally take this saying that life is short. You never know the time or day that Jesus is coming or that he's literally going to cut off his grace from you and that's it there is absolutely no coming back and like i i had a wake up call and it's it's not something to play around with and i i, I genuinely genuinely hope that you guys take this to heart and if you guys have visions or you guys have dreams that resonate to what I'm saying or you've had experience, you're not alone. These are not experiences. These are visions. These are out-of-body experience. These are visions. This is true. This is real. And after you lose your life, there is no repentance at that point. Once you end up in hell, there is no coming back. There is no coming back. So 